Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about the task scheduler in Dynamics Nav 2017 or later or business intro. So the task scheduler was introduced from Dynamics Nav 2017 and it is used to control the execution of the job queue entries. And sometimes if your job queue uh, does not work and uh, you may want to go to your Dynamics Nav 20, uh, 2017 or later uh, administration console to check if the task scheduler is enabled. So usually uh, the task scheduler is enabled by default when you do the Dynamics Nav or Business Central installation. But uh, maybe like uh, uh, people will disable this <coughs> task scheduler uh, manually in the administration console for some other purpose. So recently we have a case like uh, our customer want to um, use the approval workflow in their uh, NAV 2017, but they're using LS NAV 2017. So it's uh, Dynamics NAV, but um, LS Retail built their functionality on top of Dynamics NAV, so it's LS NAV 2017. And uh, we tried everything, but still does not have it work. And at the end, uh, we found the task scheduler has been disabled. So uh, that's the case because uh, if you have a customer uh, in a similar situation, like you tried everything, uh, but the job queue entry still does not execute properly, then you may want to check in the administration console to see if the task scheduler has been uh, enabled. In this scenario, it's because they're using us nav and LS has their own scheduler uh, and scheduler job just to avoid the conflict between the auto box uh, nav task scheduler. Our retail team disabled the task scheduler to avoid to avoid it to crash the LS nav scheduler. So that's why. And but sometimes uh, some people may disable. So it's uh, worth to check if you have the job queue entry does not work properly. You may want to go to your if you are using Dynamics Nav 2017 or later, you may want to go to the administration, administration console to see if the task scheduler has been enabled. So in this scenario, I'm using my uh, on-premise business central. If I want to uh, go to my um, uh, general journal line and uh, send a pull request from my general journal, let, let me cancel the pull request so I can resend it, okay? So when I send a pull request and at the same time, if you watch my other video, then you will see, you can go to the job queue entry. You will have this notification entry dispatcher, this new entry generated. And the time will be one minute ahead of your current time. My current time is the 12.57. So the task scheduler in the, in the administration console scheduled this job queue entry to execute at 12.58, which is one minute ahead of my time. If you don't have the task scheduler running, then you may see uh, the time, like this entry generator will be the same time when you send a pull request. So that's why it is not working, okay? So that's what I found. It's like um, I, we check everything in our customer's environment. At the, at, at the end, I found their time is not updated. Their earliest, uh, uh, the earliest start, the date is the same day, but the time was, was not updated. So then um, it made me doubt their task scheduler may not be enabled. Then I made a check of that and finally found it, it was disabled. But usually you may, not, you may not doubt is the case because that will be automatically enabled when you do the installation. So you see the notification is coming when I have this uh, task scheduler enabled and everything set up. Okay, so let's uh, do another uh, simulation. If I disable it, Let's uh, close everything here and I close my nav. And then uh, another thing is like if, you, for example, I have two instances. Usually you may have one instance for the nav, another for the application, right, for NAS. But they're connecting to the same database, right? So if you have multiple instances, but uh, only uh, like you disable from one, but you didn't disable from the other. So for example, this instance, if it's running, but I didn't disable this task scheduler, then it will still work because there's another instance it can use to for that job queue. But if you have this stuff, like what I'm doing, if I have that running, but that task scheduler is enabled, this task scheduler is not enabled, 
then you will still have it work. But if you have this doubt and you only have one instance and you have the task scheduler disabled, then it will not work, okay? So I'm gonna disable it and let you see what's gonna happen. So if I disable this, and after I disable it, I have to restart the service, okay? I have to restart this BC14 service. Let's restart this, okay? And after I restart it, and uh, it's been restarted, that, but you don't see that progress bar, so usually I just want to make sure, I want to see that progress, progress bar, which shows, you see, this progress bar, I want to see this. And it's uh, restarted, okay? I can reopen my Business Central, and then my, because before that open, we can double check, we already have the task scheduler disabled, right? We want to make sure it did that, okay? So this task scheduler is still, uh, we just uh, disable it, it's disabled. And uh, we only have one instance running, which has the task scheduler disabled. If we have another one running, which connect to the same database server, and then uh, task scheduler is enabled, then you will still have it working. But now I have that stopped, and I have this task scheduler disabled. When I open my business central, I'm going to do the same thing. Then, uh, so just go to my job queue entry to show you I, I don't have anything for that job uh, notification dispatcher. It's gone, right? It's not there. So that task scheduler, what that task scheduler is doing is like after the notification is sent, then that job queue entry will disappear. But if you have it disabled, then we go to general journal and um, we're gonna send the approval request again. So go here. So I still have to cancel it so that I can send again. So I'm gonna cancel that approval request, and then I'm going to send it again. After I send it again, okay, then let's go to our job queue entry to take a look. I do have this notification entry dispatcher generated, but the time, so this time is, is one minute ahead, though. It's one, oh, the current time is 1.01, but this time is 1.02. It's still one minute ahead. It's one minute ahead, then it will work. If it's the same time, then it will not work. The reason I still have it one minute ahead may be because I didn't restart. Um, when I restarted that job queue entry, uh, when I restarted this uh, service, maybe it's do something cached, so it didn't uh, completely uh, disable that task scheduler. That's why we still have, we still see the time is still one minute ahead, okay? So, as long as it's one minute ahead, I should receive something. I should receive an email notification. Let's just wait a little bit. So actually, it's do something cached Why before I restart the service. After I restart the service, do something cached so that it's still scheduled the time to be one minute ahead the time I send out the approval request. But if the cache has been um, removed, you don't have any cache anymore, then it should, the time will be the same time, like when you send a pull request, it's 103, and this time will be 103. Then that's why it's not sending a, the pull request. But even that this time, the time showed us one minute ahead. Let's see, this approval request is the one I did it I re, before I restarted the service. So you see, this is 12.58. It's not a new notification. Even that, so let's remove these just to avoid the confusion, okay? Then let's see if we still have something coming in. No, we don't, okay? And then we don't have anything coming in. And this, you see, the time already passed. 103, it's 103. And, uh, but we don't have anything coming in. So that's why it's not working. Because after we disable this task scheduler, even you still see the time one minute ahead, and uh, because it's not scheduled, then you don't have any notification. Okay, so then let's just try again. Okay, what we want to try is like we have this, you see, because it's never been sent, and this is hung. This 102 stays there, 
this is exactly what happened in our customer's environment. Okay, you still have this job queue entry in this uh, exists here, and it didn't dis disappear because it's never the email notification never got sent. And then if you do it again, so if it, you, you have the task scheduler enabled, then this will disappear after the email notification is sent. But because this email notification never got sent, so it still stay here, even you refresh. And if you go to your general journal and to send again, it will still have nothing sent, okay? So if you do cancel and then send, and you will see the time in that job queue entry hang, still hang at 102. It does not get updated. So, yeah, so this is, but like, um, if there's uh, originally after you restart the service, nothing cache and the time you will see, it will, uh, like if I send the request at 102, the time will show as 102 exactly. It won't even um, schedule it at 103. But in our case, like uh, we, we send it at 101 and we see the time is 102, it's one minute ahead, but it's still because the task scheduler is disabled and the time does not, uh, even the time is one minute ahead, it's scheduled, but nothing got sent. And if you set then because nothing got sent, this job queue entry will be hung, will hang in here and um, will not disappear from your job queue entry. So if you try again, in theory, when I try again, the time should update to the time like um, I send a request, but it didn't get updated. It just hand to the old time, right? So that's what's going on. If that's a scenario, then you have to go to your administration console and to check if you have the task scheduler disabled. That could be the issue why it's not working. Okay, thank you so much for watching this YouTube channel, this YouTube video. I hope to see you guys again next time.